People often ask and wonder what is the best camera setup for beginners, especially those who are off traveling and want to dip their toes into this new hobby. They need to find something that is versatile, easy to use and can cover everything because they don't want to be carrying too much. Well, today I'm going to show you what I believe to be the best the most versatile setup for beginners and also the most cost effective. And today I'm going to show you what I believe the Canon 600D paired with the Sigma 17 to 50 lens is the perfect setup for you. So you want to buy a camera, but there's four questions that you need to ask yourself. Why are you looking to purchase a camera? What are you looking to do with it? What are you hoping to achieve? And how much are you willing to spend? Now, most people say what they want is something that shoots in 4K and can shoot 120 frames per second. However, the problem with that is that 4K cameras are actually really expensive and might not be the right camera for you just yet. Most iPhones or Galaxy or any kind of smartphones, I mean, this my phone shoots in 4K and it shoots in 120 frames. And if you've looked at your photo, you've looked at how the videos look on your iPhone and you still don't think that's good enough. Well, that kind of demonstrates that 4K at 120 FPS doesn't equal great footage. Now, if you're a beginner, the benchmark should be 1080p. Now, for those who don't know, 1080p is a HD resolution and it's the highest point of HD before you get in your 2.7 or 4K. And 1080p is still currently, as I say this in 2021, is still the industry benchmark. Even though I said that this iPhone shoots in 4K, the screen is actually 1080p. So it doesn't matter if you shoot in 4K, most people only view things in 1080p still. So don't think you need 4K to shoot good video because that's just simply not true. Now, at the start of the video, I did say 120 FPS and frames per second. Now, all that is is the simple frames that are recorded per second. Now, generally speaking, 24 or 30 frames per second is the standard for shooting YouTube videos or any kind of talking head or podcasts or anything like that. Generally speaking, Hollywood films are shot at 24 frames per second. So if you want a more cinematic look, this is what you go for. So what we've just done is established that all you need as a beginner is a camera that shoots up to 24 or 30 frames per second at 1080p. You need a camera that is cheap so that when you're just starting to get into it, you don't want to break the bank and you need one that is easy to use. Now, the perfect camera for you, I believe, is this. This is the Canon 600D. Now, in North America, I believe they're called the Rebel cameras and they're absolute beasts. This camera, you can shoot up to 24 or 30 frames per second at 1080p and you can also shoot slow-mo 60 frames per second at 720, which is still HD. And it's got a number of different settings for different photography needs that you're trying to achieve. So the one that may be the most common that you'll use if you're traveling is the landscape photography setting. You get it to this setting, you take the picture and the camera will have the best settings for landscape photography. Now this is very, very, very helpful when you just want to get a quick shot and you're still learning the processes. However, what this camera is really good at is you can still put it into manual mode and as you get better photography and you learn what ISO is, your shutter speed and your aperture, you can have it on manual and you, so it can take you to a higher level. You can shoot decent video on this, you can shoot very good photos and you can shoot in JPEG or RAW. Now for those who don't know what that is, JPEG is something that you would have something on your phone, but it's the basic photo file, whereas RAW files basically have more data, they have more pixels in the image, so what you're able to do is edit it and get more creative with it when you put it into something like Lightroom. And another thing that this camera has, which is so important, is a flip out screen. Now this might not seem like much of a big deal, but trust me, the more you get into photography, you'll realize this is amazing. Even the Sony A7 
free, which is about a 1700 pound camera doesn't have a flip out screen, but this little 200 pound camera does. So when you're doing vlogging and you want to have the camera in front of you, you've got the screen there so you can see how you look like and how you're framed in the shot. Build quality of this is still very good. It's very rustic, but obviously behind the price it is, it's not gonna be perfect. It isn't weather sealed um, and it's mostly plastic. It's still well built and it will still see you through a lot of things. For me, I've had this for probably about eight, nine years and it's seen me through a lot and it has never put a foot wrong. Now, obviously any camera that is recommended to you is not gonna be the perfect camera. Unfortunately, this doesn't matter if you're spending thousands of pounds on a camera. As much as we want a camera to do absolutely everything, unfortunately they don't. So there is some cons to this. Uh, the first one being if you are looking to do a lot of video, this camera does not come with IBIS. Now IBIS simply stands for in body image stabilization. And all that means is that when you're shooting and your arm shakes a little bit, the image can be a bit blurry. However, if you can find a lens that has image stabilization within it, then that's fine and that's how you can get around it. Now, if you are looking to do video as well, it's worth mentioning that this camera doesn't have tracking autofocus while filming. Obviously it has autofocus when you are taking pictures. Now. Personally, I don't see there's much of a drawback. There'll be a lot of people, a lot of high videographers that will tell you they don't actually shoot in autofocus, they shoot manual because they have more control. And I think this is the reason why it's such a, still a good option for you, even if you are looking for autofocus, because it forces you to learn how to focus properly. So, uh, and this video is quite a nice example of manual focus. And I was very new to, to focusing, and this shows you where you always have that blur go out of focus, into focus, and then pan out to the view that's there. And you can do that through manual focus. So this is why I don't consider the lack of autofocus for a beginner a con. I think it helps you and pushes you to learn how to work focus properly. So the next part you need to decide on after you've decided on the camera is the lens. And when you're looking at any lenses, there's a number of factors that will determine how expensive it is. First is the sensor size, the how many f-stops it has, and the built quality. So the f-stop on the lens basically determines how wide you can open the lens. The lower the f number, the wider you can open it. So the wider the aperture can go, the more light you can let in, which means better performance in low light situations. And also, the more light you're able to let in, the easier it will be to achieve them nice blurry backgrounds that you may have seen on some cameras. You might be able to pick up the camera with a kit lens available. Now, this is the kit lens that generally comes with it. It is the Canon 18-55 f 4.5. Now this lens you can pick up for around £40 online if you don't get it with the body. It comes with image stabilization. So when I said the downside of the camera is that it doesn't have in body stabilization, well the lens does. So that means that's not an issue anymore. However, if you want something that's just slightly better, has got that better performance in low light, it, you're able to achieve the nice bow backgrounds because that's so important to you, well, I've got the perfect lens for you, which doesn't break the bank, and that is this. This is the Sigma 17 to 50 millimeter f 2.8. So what you'll notice is that Canon kit lens is f 4.5 and this is f 2.8. So what that means is this is better in low light and helps you to achieve them nice blurry background shots easier. You can be further away from your subject and still achieve that look. Now, if we're going to look at the built quality of this, overall, this feels like a more sturdy lens. It's made of more metal, um, it's got more rubber and just feels a little bit more rugged. And this lens produces great sharp images, far sharper than the kit lens and also has a constant f 2.8 aperture so it doesn't matter if you, if you go to full 50 meters or 17 you're going to have that f 2.8 all the way through and as well if you were wondering it does have optical stabilization which is image stabilization which means once again when you attach it to the camera the lack of in body image stabilization once again isn't an issue the biggest con of this lens is probably the weight 
Now this weighs about 595 grams, which is actually heavier than the camera here. So obviously when you put that all together, you're looking at just over a kilogram of weight. Now I don't know if that's gonna be an issue for you. Personally for me, when I've been taking this around, I took this over to Iceland, I've taken it through Europe, I never really noticed it as an issue. I was happy to make the sacrifice of the weight for the images that I was getting out of my camera. Now again, if we're comparing it to the Canon kit lens, I picked this out for around 150 pounds. It's obviously 110 pounds more expensive than you can pick up the kit lens for. But as I said, the determining factor of lenses in terms of price is the built quality and how wide you can open up that lens. This is f2.8, that is an f4.5 and that's why it is more expensive. You're gonna get sharper images, you're gonna get better performance in low light and you're gonna be able to achieve them blurry backgrounds easier than this lens. And once again, because it's a 17 to 50 lens, it covers so many different avenues so you won't have to keep taking a lens off, taking it off, taking a lens off, taking it on. You can just use this one lens for run and gun situations and that's why I think this is such a good pairing with the Canon 600D. Now I've waffled on about the specifications and why I think it's good but I think the most determining factor for most people is what kind of results can we get from it um, and these just these shots are a number of different things from different parts around the world and yet if you're happy with the kind of results that we're seeing here then this could be the camera setup for you. And um, what you'll hopefully see from this is how nice the colors are. I haven't switched from Canon to Sony, I, I've now realized how nice the Canon's colors are. Um, and you'll see throughout all of these all of these videos that I think you can get really nice shots, um, nice slow-mos as well. So, and even when you've got, you fully grade a footage just like here, you see how the subject who is my girlfriend is nicely in focus and we have that blur behind. Again, this is the aperture. So this is what you can achieve by that, which is why I think this Sigma lens is the best option for you if you want to achieve that. So you, again, comes back to my question right at the start of the video, what are you hoping to achieve and what are you looking to do? If you are looking to achieve something with a nice blur, make it nice and cinematic, then I think this this is the lens you need to get. Now, there are some alternative cameras that you may come across, um, as there are some honorable mentions. Uh, there is an updated version of this camera which came out, I think, in about 2018 called the Canon 4000D. Now, this is about £370. However, I still don't think it's worth purchasing the updated version of this camera. The reason being is because it doesn't come out with a flip out screen. You still don't have tracking autofocus in video and I'm not sure it's worth the jump up in price. If you're willing to spend 370 pounds on just the body, then you can save yourself money and get this exact setup with the Sigma lens. This is why I think that that is a better option. However, you can look at some possibly some mirrorless cameras. So you have the Sony A6000, which is a great camera. Again, it shoots in 1080p. So there's our benchmark. However, because it is mirrorless, if you wanted to buy this brand new, you are gonna have to pay about 500 pounds for it. Now, another honorable mention is any kind of GoPro from seven black upwards. You can shoot in raw pictures. You can shoot actually up to 4K in these cameras as well. However, to get the most out of a GoPro, you need to go into manual settings. So that means you need to understand shutter speed, it means you understand white balance and ISO. And if you don't understand what that is yet, then this is why I don't think they're good options for absolute beginners. Uh, now also just worth mentioning for those who don't know, you will need to get an SD card so you're able to store all the videos and pictures you take. Again, these aren't very much. You can get a 64 gigabyte SD for about 15 pounds, so it's not a lot of money. <clears throat> now obviously you're not gonna get super crisp results with this camera, but I still think you can get great results as I've just shown you. Of course, getting better gear helps, but it's not gonna equal the better results. There's so much to photography and videography. You, you need to learn about the technical sides of it, the shutter speeds, the ISOs, the white balance, but you also need to learn about lighting and how lighting can affect your image. You need to learn about storytelling and composition. So there's so many things to look at and each of them things that I just mentioned 
it almost deserves a video on its own. I think this is the ultimate beginner setup, especially if you're going to travel. It's a great place to start. It doesn't break the bank and you'll be able to get some great results. And please let me know in the comments if there's any more information you want about this setup. Uh, this is the setup that I use and I guarantee most of your photographers or videographers you're looking up to started on one of these cameras. But that's it for today's video. Hopefully I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.